Welcome to this overview of the Fish Hawk Channing Park Line Design Study. In the summer of 2013, Tampa Electric Company asked power engineers to conduct an independent review of a planned transmission line project located adjacent to the Fish Hawk and Channing Park communities. The purpose of the study was to design a transmission line that meets long-term system requirements and minimizes the impacts to the adjacent communities. The one mile long study corridor, including both easements and land owned by Tico, is situated between two neighborhood communities, Fishhawk and Channing Park. The stretch of land contains a 300 foot right of way that was established in 1987 to allow for the construction and maintenance of future transmission lines. The 300 foot strip of vegetated land currently provides a visual buffer between residences and includes a recreation trail running north to south within the easement. This one mile section is part of a larger project which begins at the Polk Power Station located south of County Road 630 off State Route 37 and ends at the Fish Hawk substation. Before the design process could begin, the project team worked closely with TECO engineers and their community outreach specialists to understand the goals of the project and the values most important to the two communities. These values were obtained through feedback at earlier public open house meetings. This is what was heard. The first goal is to design, build, and maintain this transmission project to meet the long-term needs of TECO's customers for reliable power now and in the future. The second goal is to reduce the visual impacts of the new transmission line to adjacent homeowners. The third goal is to minimize the impacts to the natural land area that exists between Fishhawk and Channing Park. And finally, the fourth goal is to reduce the impacts to residents who use the recreation trail by keeping a natural and rural feel. Once project goals and community values were established, our designers studied the existing conditions within the project area. After a thorough site review, opportunities and constraints were identified which helped establish the framework for the line design. Three opportunities were identified. First, existing transmission pads spaced at 400 foot intervals could be used for structure placement and to reduce construction disturbance of natural and pond areas. Second, Existing mature vegetation could be used to aid in screening future transmission structures. Finally, an existing stand of mature trees located on the eastern edge of the Tico right-of-way could serve as a visual buffer for Fishhawk and Channing Park residences. Several constraints were also identified during the site review process. Most importantly, any construction must take place within the 300-foot wide Tico right-of-way. Additionally, a 40-foot wide water line easement, existing water retention ponds, and the recreation trail must remain intact. To keep the north-south connection of the trail intact, it may need to be modified to meet the goals of the project. No question, this was going to be a challenge. To fully study site conditions and design options, a 3D model was developed. Elevation data, vegetation data, aerial imagery, and ground photography were used to develop an accurate representation of the project area. This 3D model would be used extensively to study and compare different transmission line designs and measure them against the goals of the project. In order to evaluate the transmission design options and compare them to the values expressed by the public, we first must understand the different types of viewers within the project area. Not all viewers have the same types of viewing conditions. Three types of viewers were identified, each with their own unique concern. The first viewer type is characterized by unobstructed and adjacent views of the proposed transmission line from either Fishhawk or Channing Park. For these residents, it will be important to protect the existing vegetation in the foreground and minimize the size and number of the transmission structures as much as possible. 
The second viewer is characterized by fully or partially screened views of the corridor. Their views are screened by either trees or other homes. These residents are primarily concerned with the height of the transmission structures and keeping them screened from view. The third viewer type is characterized by recreation trail users. For these viewers, it will be important to maintain a rural and relaxed feel by reducing the number of structures and maintaining as much natural vegetation as possible. Through a series of internal design workshops with TECO and Powers Visualization, Strategic Communication and Engineering Specialists, 15 design options were evaluated. All of the design options were based on four parameters by which compatibility was measured. Structure height and use of the shortest pole feasible, minimizing vegetation clearing in natural areas, minimizing the impact to trail users, and minimizing the number and mass of structures. Three final designs were chosen and carried forward based on the highest compatibility with these project priorities and the feedback from previous local community meetings. The first design option features 125 foot monopole structures with a 69 kV under build line spaced 800 feet apart on existing construction pads and will require a clearing limit of 120 feet. Advantages to this design are minimized impacts to the existing vegetation and the recreation trail. Placing the structures 800 feet apart also allows for the fewest number of poles to be used. As shown in this photo simulation from the Fishhawk Community Church, the disadvantage of this design is that the monopole is the tallest and therefore visible to the greatest number of partially screened viewers. This is also demonstrated in this photo simulation from the Channing Park Community Center. The second design option features 75 foot tall H-frame structures with a 69 kV under build line spaced 400 feet apart on existing construction pads and will require a clearing limit of 160 feet. The advantage of this design is the low height of the H-frame structures, which makes them the least visible structures from a distance, as you can see from this photo simulation from the Fishhawk Community Church. The disadvantages of this option are that it has the widest footprint and will require the most disturbance to the existing vegetation and highest impact to the recreation trail, as you can see from this photo simulation from the southern end of the recreation trail looking north. This option also requires the greatest number of structures, greatly impacting unobstructed viewers adjacent to the corridor. The third design option is a balance of the first two options. This option features 110 foot tall monopole structures where the 69 kV line has been moved from the underbuild to the same height as the 230 kV line. The structures are spaced 800 feet apart on existing construction pads and will require a clearing limit of 140 feet. As seen from this photo simulation from the southern end of the recreation trail looking north, there are several advantages to this design. They include shorter poles, minimized disturbance to the vegetation and the recreation trail, and longer spans which allow for less visual impact to viewers adjacent to the corridor.
The three design options were analyzed and ranked according to structure height, natural area compatibility, recreation compatibility, and structure count and size. The third option resulted in the highest ranking. As a final step in the study, a master plan was completed for the line design, including rebuilding sections of the recreation trail. Tico believes this design strikes a balance between community and system needs by meeting the goals established at the beginning of the design process. This level of small area siding detail is unusual for a transmission project, but Tico is committed to working with stakeholders to find solutions to these types of challenges. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the thorough process used to develop a design plan for this portion of the transmission line project.